samurai. I wonder if that applies to warrior monks. Because it just says samurai and ashigaru. I wonder if it affects my warrior monks. Well, even if not, um, maybe it wouldn't hurt to have my ashigaru get some armor. Um, let's see, did I already improve my artisan? Yeah, I did. So I'll go ahead and improve to this uh, armor. And let's go ahead and take this army and march. Uh, we're going to declare war on the Hatakiyama. Their allies are the Hanma. These are the guys with the gold mine, so it's okay if I'm at war with them. And the Sutsui. Um, I don't really discussion. care. The Hanma didn't join the war, which is good, because they won't be expecting me to attack them at this point. So we'll take this uh, town from the Hatakiyama the next turn. It looks like it's uh, it should be pretty easy pickings. Hopefully the U.S. Aggie don't just march against me as well. I do have some uh, troops training there, though, to uh, to help hold that province. Let's go ahead and end this turn. Getting some warrior monks early on. Plus, if you oh, I forgot to mention, if you build the uh, the larger temples, and as you build the uh, the whatever it was called temples for the uh, the Iko Iki, you'll actually get garrison units of warrior monks, which is very handy uh, when defending these provinces. So uh, definitely a helpful feature of that particular um, of that particular building. In fact, let's see if we can go ahead and we can build the uh, Jodo Senshu Temple. So that's what we'll build. And look, it, just by building this small one, I do get the uh, the Iko Iko uh, Naginata Warrior Monk uh, as one of the defending units. So definitely want to go for that. So let's see, we got six more turns till we get this, and then I will research Bushido and then strategy of defense, and that will allow us to train warrior monks. So we're a little ways away from being able to train warrior monks. Uh, let's see. Never hurts just to train a few more troops here. We want to definitely have a solid foothold on our home provinces. Uh, there's very little troops to, to guard this, so I don't really want to waste the time showing this battle. So I think I want to go ahead and just auto-resolve this one. Peacefully occupy. I wonder if any of my units gained any chevrons. I mean, they didn't do a whole lot of fighting. Darn it, they didn't. Oh well. Alright, so we have another province. Um, you can see that that's going to help our income just a little bit. Uh, it, won't do, it won't do wonders or anything, but, you know, it's not bad. And then we'll be able to build a building here next turn and then uh, improve those farms as well. And that'll help us get more food. And that also helps your income to improve those farms, by the way. So there, it's kind of a twofold thing there. And you got to have the food in order to, to make improved markets and also to, uh, to build larger castle towns. And the larger castle towns, of course, allow you to you know, have more buildings, which will then allow you to train you know, a lot better types of units. Uh, let's see. The Hattori want a military alliance. Discuss matters of mutual interest Their enemies so right now... Let's see... Are the Hatakiyama and the Sutsui, um, and their allies are the Oda. So this would actually be a pretty good alliance right now, because the Shogun and the Oda are, are on with them. So I think I am going to take this alliance. None of their enemies are my trade partners, so this should be a pretty safe alliance. Let's do that. And this will help give us some protection from a much larger clan. And since they're also allied with the Oda, uh, that should give me general protection from the Oda. It looks like the Takeda are rapidly expanding. Um, hopefully they'll keep the U.S. Eggie bogged down uh, so that I can just go ahead and take care of whatever I feel like for the time being. Let's see, my trade was disrupted with that clan. I can't say that I really care because I still hate those guys from my last campaign. <laughs> Let's see. Um, you know what would be handy to build is to actually build a, um, a cavalry stables here. Uh, that way I can... Oh, I should have upgraded my farms. Oh well. Uh, I, I do want to build the cavalry stable so I can uh, train some light cav units because that'll really make that'll make an Ashigaru army a whole lot more versatile if you have some cavalry to back it up. So I don't really have a whole lot of money after that, and I don't really want to train a whole lot more troops right at this moment. Well, I guess I probably will go ahead and train a couple more units there. Let's go ahead and end this turn. Like I said, I just want to have a solid foothold on my whole home provinces. Um, let's see, the Takeda want a trade agreement. We should discuss matters of mutual interest so that all may profit. I hope that doesn't affect my relationship with the U.S. Aggie because they're enemies with the Takeda. A most satisfactory but I do want the extra income. And I don't really care who wins the fight between the U.S. Aggie and the Takeda. 
I'm sure I'll end up defending myself from whoever does. Uh, but hopefully they'll fight each other for a long time and keep my border more secure. Looks like the Hattori are moving south, and the Oda must be moving against the Takeda, probably. Man, the Oda popped out there with several provinces real quick. Again, though, you don't want to let these clans get too powerful, though. You're definitely going to want to strike at them when you get the... So the, the USA and the Takeda were allied, actually. Wow, so they broke that alliance. Interesting. Let's train a monk here. A life of enlightenment is bliss. But to share this with the people is a greater gift. Monks inspire armies and generals, and can inspire a repressed Buddhist population to rebel. Alright, so we got our monk there. I don't think they can move on the first turn. We'll take him up to, uh, to put him in with this army. Plus, I think we need to... This populace should be converting already to the eco-faith, because the eco-generals have the ability to convert the population. So uh, hopefully by moving this monk up there too, that'll help that move along quicker. And we need to leave this uh, population at least majority, probably, um, eco-faith. Let's see, we don't really have a whole lot of money. I do want to save my money and upgrade to a larger castle town here. And I also need to upgrade the farms up here. I will go ahead and do the farms first, uh, because that'll help. Um, definitely help our income and then give us more food supply also. I should probably build a sake den in one of my towns too once I expand them because uh, that sake den will give me the opportunity to recruit ninja and that could be helpful in defending my provinces. The Hanma are out on that island. We definitely want to take those guys out. Let's see which clan was destroyed here. Sutsui, okay. Well, they were one of our enemies, so that's good. Uh, clan adopts Christianity. The Shoni, big surprise. They're always the first. Okay. Minister to that settlement. Looks like my artisans are still building, so once that finishes, that should jump my income up a little. Let's see. My farms are done in these provinces. See, the roads just add to replenishment and movement speed. I'm not really worried about the movement speed too much, but... Let's see, um... I think I just want to save my money and then build a larger castle here in my home province. So let's go ahead and end one... Or is my cavalry stables complete? Almost. Let's go ahead and end one more turn. Having that light cavalry just really adds an element of versatility to your army and then what really helps is if eventually you can get a unit of two or of katana or yari cavalry into your army it will make your army much more powerful i don't know if any of you are like me but it seems like a lot of time on the campaign i just really don't use much cavalry and that's a big mistake because it just makes your your army is much more capable of soundly defeating uh, enemy armies not only that but making sure that they don't get away with many or any survivors so it's definitely a good idea to, uh, to have the cavalry in your army. Like I said, it adds that huge element of versatility. And I do want to research uh, all of the matchlock tree and try and show you some more of that in this long campaign, so that should be a good opportunity. The nice thing about the long campaign, like I said, is you um, a suspicious death. Hmm. Let's see, I can have another general. The question is whether I really want one right now. I need the money to improve my town, so I'm not going to enlist right now. I bet my monk was the one that got killed. And I'll bet you the Hattori killed him. Because <laughs> they didn't want their uh, province being converted to the eco-faith. Um, we should be alright without the monk for now. Let's go ahead and increase the, our castle town there. And see if we can recruit a unit of light cavalry. Looks like I can recruit two of these guys good. So, and I can go ahead and take this monk up here. Let's see how the settlement's doing. Okay, it's uh, rapidly changing from Shinto Buddhist to the Eco. Let's see, it says uh, growing plus 4.5 religious zeal. So we have the general plus the monk plus the Eco influence from the surrounding ones, and this is all going down. Okay, so we should be good on that. 
let's go ahead and once again end another turn. You can see my artisan's finished and uh, now my income is up because I have more luxury goods to trade. I wonder, actually, if I'm getting war horses, I'm going to look on the uh, diplomacy screen and look at my trade, because if, if I'm trading with a Takeda, I should be getting war horses, and I could actually just um, train a unit of Yari cavalry. Um, if I increase the castle town at Noto, I could build a war horse stables, and then also build a sake den up there. And then I think I'll build a Nagi Nada dojo at um, Echizen, and then I'll build an archery dojo at my other town, and that would allow me to train bow warrior monks, uh, Naginata, uh, okay, so there's my right cavalry, yeah, I think I'm gonna make this town where I can, actually, this one would be a better one to make where I can recruit bow warrior monks, because their accuracy would be better, and this one would be better for my, my, uh, warrior monks, because, um, I hope this armory would actually increase their armor and stuff, so that's what we'll do, I'll build an archery dojo here, uh, once I increase the size of this town, I will build the, the um, Naginata Dojo, and then up here we'll see if we can upgrade to a War Horse Stables. So that should work out. I do need to get one of my uh, docks upgraded though. At least I, well actually I may not need to. Let's see what I got as far as my, as far as my docks go up here. Yeah, I can't recruit anything because that's just a coastal village. I'll have to upgrade it to a harbor. Let's do that, and then on the next turn, I will start increasing the size of one of these castle towns. So some of you may think, oh, here, there's no battles going on, this part's boring. Hey, this is just kind of a necessary step, I think. Uh, rather than getting a bunch of big fights here, my income's pretty good. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to recruit some solid, tough armies and to really secure a defensive um, position, because I think if you, if you were to get too many people angry and get overextended early on in this campaign, it could get very tough. And uh, I'm not interested in necessarily expanding super rapid at this point. I want to get a really, really solid economy and military base from which to operate and make sure that my research is very good as well. Uh, that way I can use those things to my advantage. I haven't done the best job of that in some of my past campaigns. So it says mission successful. Uh, master the following essence and spirit. So now I have a unit of Naginata warrior monks. Uh, now it says saying scholarship. Let's see, the Hitori Oda alliance is broken down. That is not good. I wish they would have stayed allied to each other. We'll now research the Bushido and then the strategy of defense. And then eventually it's a good thing to research this uh, Todu Fukin here or whatever. Um, and because that minus 5% to our upkeep cost uh, clan wide. And then this equal field is another good one because it gives you more tax income. So we will come back to the Chi Arts fairly quick as we won't need to research too terribly much over here. Mostly just here, here, and this. And that should give us um, the basics of what we need. And uh, I think I will try and go mostly without sword units, just to, to try and represent there for the the eco. Yeah, we can upgrade to a war horse stables. Awesome. But I think first I'm going to go ahead and uh, increase this uh, the size of this castle town there. And then I have this unit of warrior monks. Uh, let's see. I'll put them here in my home province with that general. So that'll definitely make this a more powerful. You can see there's just a, uh, statistics here. They have pretty good statistics. 15 morale, 16 attack, 9 defense. Uh, definitely a good unit, but look at their upkeep cost, 190, as opposed to the 71 upkeep cost for Ashigaru. So you don't want an all warrior monk army. You definitely want to mix it up just a little bit, um, unless you have a really, really strong economy, because they will break you as far as the upkeep cost. And the samurai units are a little less expensive than the bow, or than the um, the warrior monk units as far as upkeep, but not a whole lot. Uh, both are very expensive to maintain. It looks like the U.S. Eggy are actually heading north towards the Date. That's good. Uh, if they keep their attention up there, that would be fantastic. The Takeda are still looking quite powerful, and so are the Oda. In fact, I think I'm just going to train a couple of units of Yard Cav and then drop my two units of Light Cav, or, uh, yeah, I'll probably just drop the two units of Light Cav. Or maybe I'll just send them down here. Yeah, I'll just send them down here and use them with that army. And then this Yari Ronin, I will put it in this army and uh, help just make this city just a little bit tougher for people to attack. And let's see, up here, yeah, like I said, I'll recruit the Yari Cav, and we should be good once I do that. 
I can go ahead and build the Warhorse Stable. So let's get that done. Getting some nice improvements here in our in our towns. I think this is going to be a good way to go. These uh, Sakai are pretty powerful there. Uh, I am trading with them, but you know, part of me would almost like to go ahead and and, and take their city there just because I don't want them to get a huge army and then march against me. So sometimes it's better to be proactive, sometimes it's not. We'll take a look at the diplomacy screen and, and see what their diplomacy looks like and see if attacking them would gain us a bunch of new enemies that we don't need. If they're mostly just out on their own, then we might just go ahead and attack them with my other general and secure that province. Okay, so we're now studying strategy of defense. This is what we want. So in three turns, we should be able to recruit Naginata units. Um, and then I'm going to research this this right here, and then equal fields to help make my income and upkeep, you know, more manageable. And then after that, we will rec research the fire arrows and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and move these guys into their respective positions. Let's take a look at the diplomacy real quick. The Sakai have no enemy, or they don't have any enemies, but they do have allies, and one of their allies is the Hitori. So attacking these guys would probably not be smart because it's hard to say whether the Hitori would back me or back the Sakai. And uh, their other ally is the... Uh, it's an unknown clan, that's why it's kind of blanked out. Let's click on the Sakai here. Uh, the Takaoka or something like that. Not really sure where they're at. It says undiscovered. I wonder if there's any other trade partners we can pick up here. No, it doesn't look like it. All right, I think we are good for now. I don't think we need to spend any more money this turn. Actually, I wonder if we can build the building we want here. Uh, no, because uh, this is where I want. Yeah, this is where I want the uh, the archery dojo, because that's where my uh, my archery bonus is. Well, if I build the archery dojo, I can recruit Bo Ronan. Huh. I wonder if that's something specific. Yeah, look, I can recruit Yari Ronan, too. Maybe that's something specific to the Iko Iki, since they're rebels. I had never seen that before. I wonder where the sword school is. Katana Ronan. Interesting. Huh. Didn't know that. It's a new one on me. We'll check it out as time goes on, though. I might, in fact, um, trade all of those uh, Ashigaru archers I have, or just maybe go ahead and recruit a couple of bow warrior monks. I had to go on each of my armies, but not, like, make an all-bow warrior monk force. That way I do have some extra rain and, uh, range and accuracy in some of my armies. Yeah, that would probably be the better thing. I'll just make mixed armies. Because the upkeep cost in those bow warrior monks is high. Plus, I'm going to need to recruit some Yari Cab. My income is going to get quite low at one point, once I've trained the ships and everything to go attack the, uh, the, the Hanma. Um, I just really think it's my best move. I, well, I mean, I could start a fight with the Uesegi and take their provinces and then move on the Hanma. Let's see Let's see who the Uesegi is allied with. It might be a good idea to take these guys out, but then I'd have more border to defend against the Takeda. Their enemies are the Takeda. Let's see, the Takeda's enemies are the Uesegi and only the Uesegi. So I may want to... Let's see if I can make a military alliance with the Takeda and the Oda. No, their enemies, the, the uh, Hattori, I can't do that. But I, I wonder, I might be able to make an alliance 